In today's tutorial, we are going to cover a simple but fundamental concept in JavaScript. We're going to look at how to convert a string to a number and why and when you may want to do that. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. And also, check out the discount links to my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. I also have a link for how you can support this channel if you so choose. Now, there are a number of situations where you may receive a number as a string. And if that occurs, we want to make sure that we convert that string to a number before we start to do math operations on it. Or we may get unexpected results. Now, one of these scenarios is when grabbing data from an HTML form. So let's look at this example and look at three ways to convert a string to a number. And also in the process, we'll learn some things about the form elements and how they return data. So here I've set up a simple form where basically we're entering a number and then we're choosing what we want that multiplied by. That's what I'm doing here is multiplication. We're going to change that in a minute to show some things. And then it will give us the results over here. It's not set up to work yet. As you can see, nothing is happening on this side. So let's take a look at the code right here. Basically what I've done is I've grabbed the elements that I need to. This is the number, this is the multiplier, and this is the result. So I've grabbed those three elements and then I've added event listeners to the number and to the multiplier so that when either of those change we have an input event on the number field or a change on the select for what number we want to multiply that by is going to call this function and then we'll do the computation and then put the results into the result field so to set this up let me first grab the values and so number dot value I want to grab that one and then I also want to grab the multiplier value like that so we have both of those numbers so once we have these values we can go ahead and put them in the result field and we'll just multiply them together like this Pretty simple. So let's just take a look at it really quick, see how it works. Um, so I'm going to enter 5 here. That should still equal 0. If I change this to 5, that equals 25. Let's see if we do a decimal. That works. And so th things are working fine. When we're doing multiplication, we're not having any issues. We can work with this however we want, and things seem to work fine. But let's make a change to this. Let's say this was not multiplication. Let's say we were doing addition like this. This is where we can sometimes run into trouble with numbers that are not numbers. They're actually expressed as strings. So let's take a look at that. We'll save that. Come out here. Let me refresh that page first. And then I'm going to enter, let's go to a one. We use the number picker, go to one. Notice what we get. It's concatenating those two together as a string. So one plus zero doesn't come out as one. It comes out as one zero because it's seeing those things as a string. So it's just putting the two together. You can see that again if I change this to a 10. Now we get one, one, zero. That's the string that we're getting displayed over here at the end. So when we're doing something like that, we need to make sure that we convert the strings to a number. Now, the easiest way to do that, the simplest way, is by simply putting a plus in front of these values before it's assigned to the variable here. This causes it to course the string to a number, and that should correct the problem for us. So let me save that, and we'll take a look at it again. We'll look at the same types of things. Let's say I put a one. Now we're getting it correctly. Two, we're getting it correctly. Let's change this to 10. That should be 12. We're getting that correctly. And so that took care of us 
took care of it for us. Now, that's not the only way to convert a string to a number. We also have the parse int and the parse float methods that we can use. Those are available to us to convert strings to numbers as well. Now, one of the advantages of parse int and parse float is that they can eliminate some characters from the field and still turn it into a number. Now, the way this is set up, because I used a type of number for this form element, you can't really type anything else in. I'm trying to type letters in, and it doesn't accept letters. And so we're only going to get a number there. And so because of the form element I chose, that helps me make sure that I don't get other stuff. And that's that's a good thing, obviously. But let's see if we were to change this. I'm going to go in. Oh, wrong HTML page. I'm going to change that to text. The type to text. Now, I can still type a number and it still comes out right. But watch what happens when I do some letters after it. We, of course, get NAN because it's not a number. So it's not able to take care of that. Now notice what changes when instead of using the plus, we use parse int. And we have to enclose the value in parentheses. That's how we use parse int and parse float. We enclose the values, the value in parentheses. Now that will convert it to a number, an integer number. That's what we're getting with parse int. We're going to get an integer number. Let's see what that does for us. So I'm going to refresh that. I'll just add a 5 in here. And we get the correct number. Add a 50, we get the correct number. Now what if I type letters after it? We're still getting the correct number. It removes those. Parse int, parse float will remove the numbers at the end. However, be aware, it does not remove them before. If a number comes before, we get the same problem over here. Okay. Now, notice parse int. What if I do a 0.5? It ignores that. It converts it to an integer. So we only get 50 as a result, and then 50 plus 0 is 50. 50 plus 3 is 53. So if we wanted to account for a decimal, that's where we would use parse float. Like that. And I really only need to put it there because this one can't be a decimal. So if I save that, let's look at that again. 50.5, now we get the decimal place. And if we add letters after it, it still removes those. Now, one of the advantages, another advantage of parse int and parse float is you can indicate the base number you want to convert to. By default, it uses base 10, which is what we're used to. And here's where we would enter that. So if I did those as base 10, we're going to get the same results because that's what we were using anyway as a default. So 50.5, we get 50.5. But we could convert to other base numbers. So those are the three ways we convert a string to a number. The plus symbol is a simple way to do that. There are a few advantages of parse int and parse float, but they require us to enter a little bit more. But that's how we do that type of conversion. If you found this tutorial helpful, please hit the like button and remember to subscribe. Also, remember the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description section. And click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. And thanks for watching.